Hey folks, welcome back to another edition of Which One Works. Uh, this is a small little series that I do critiquing my own images and deciding which ones work better than others for me to continue processing and then eventually posting up on social media. You know, I find this kind of work extremely beneficial to share because it gives you a little insight into some of the things that I look for as a professional photographer in my images. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, it's just the small things that make a difference between a great shot and a good shot. So let's go ahead and jump right into a few of the images that I've selected for you today. All right. All right. Even though we're in the thick of winter, spring is on a lot of people's minds. And so I thought I'd start with uh, some flower shots. These were shot down in the local tulip fields. And they are, um, of course, some orange tulips. And I've got three of them to take a look at today. So here's the first one. Now, you know, my intent with shooting this was to have a, have a couple of tulips in the shot. Um and just sort of kind of isolate them as best as I could against the background. What I like about this, the foreground tulip is sharp, which is great. The background tulip is not super sharp. So that is a little bit of a ding, but I could almost live with that because the foliage in the background way back here and the foliage in the foreground is also out of focus. So in theory or in practice, you know, really just this central tulip is the one that's in focus. And that's really the the intent and, and the subject of my shot was this foreground tulip. The other little thing that I don't like about this shot is the way the foreground tulip overlaps just a little bit with the background. I like to have space and separation between my subjects. And in this case, these tulips overlap and I don't really care for it. So let's jump to the next one and take a look at that. Hmm. Well, sharpness is still the same front and back uh, that I had before. I just slightly adjusted the camera and I want you to pay attention up here to the top of the frame. I brought this second tool up a little bit closer to the top of the frame. I still have space between the edge and the and the edge of the leaf here, the, the petal, because um, I want enough space for this to feel comfortable. But I've also filled the frame a little bit more. Notice how much green foliage is down here now versus the first shot, which is over here. In this shot, the foliage, yeah, it's there, but it doesn't really feel like a compositional element. But here I've got more foliage and it feels more a part of the shot. I still got the overlap. I'm, I'm not a fan of either of these. I think they're good shots. I don't think they're great. Uh, but let's go, let's go ahead and take a look at the third one, which is this. Now I've still got the essence of two tulips in my shot. I've got the main one that I love, but then the second tulip is down to the lower left. And you can see I don't really have much foliage at all. I have great separation between the flowers and the background. This kind of shot really exemplifies what I was going for in, in, in taking this series of images. And of course, notice the space right here between these two flowers. There's separation between them. So that is what makes this shot the one that works. Now you can see a lot of these things are just small little details. So, but you know, the, the details really matter in a lot of these photographs. So moving on to the next one, I just shot this the other day. Uh, there's a waterfall that's, you know, maybe a mile from my house. And uh, I was down there shooting a video. And so I shot a couple of frames as part of that video. And I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about which one works. So I've both of these shots are roughly the same shutter speed. I'm using a circular polarizer on them. So I've cut a lot of the glare. I've got this shot and I've got this shot. 
go back. The first one and the second one. So let's talk about the first one. The first one feels like a waterfall in a forest. I've got this framing on the left. I've got those fir trees coming in, a sizable amount of them. I've got some good space between that one vertical trunk and the left-hand side of the frame. I've got the mud bank over on the right, which is not pretty. I don't really care for that. Um, but it adds a framing sort of element to the waterfall. And as I said, it feels like a waterfall in a forest. And when I shoot waterfalls or streams or creeks, I really pay attention to the splash pools and try to get as much of the white water resolved in the frame as possible. So you can see down here at the bottom, you see how much of this I have in there. There were some rocks down here that started protruding into the frame. You can see a little edge of it right here. So I couldn't go any lower, but I really worked to get as much of this pool in as possible. Now, you know, again, it feels like a waterfall in a forest. So let me go to the go to the next shot. And this is a little bit of a tighter shot. Notice that I cut off part of the splash pool, but I still have a decent amount of it here, which is great. Um, I still have the tree on the left, but I have far less of it. So it feels less like a framing element. And over on the right-hand side, I got rid of all of that muddy bank. And the really big thing, the reason why I like this shot better than the other ones is that the, the waterfall fills the frame more than the previous shot. It feels more like this is the subject. I'm shooting a waterfall versus kind of a waterfall in a forest. The forest is not really an element in this shot to consider. But if I go back to the first one, it the forest is a, is a part of it. And this time of year, the forest's don't look their best because all the leaves are gone. It's the middle of winter. So the forest doesn't look great. But in this shot, the forest is minimized and the whole thing is about the waterfall. So you can see it's just a slight adjustment in my focal length that made a huge difference for how the image feels. And you know what's uh, extremely amazing is that you can do this type of analysis this critique work, even in abstracts or other random kinds of shots. And you'll see here as we move on to the next one, I've got an intentional camera movement series that I want to talk about in this episode of Which One Works. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So intentional camera movement. This was in Grand Tetons just this past December. We were out shooting the stand of trees. And I thought I'd play around with a little bit of intentional camera movement. As you can see, you know, with ICM, a lot of it really, it's up to the artist, whatever you want to do. So this is kind of one of the first shots that I did. And this, this stand of trees, it was really close together. It was more bushes, actually. But it was really close together, so it created a lot of visual lines, a lot of visual information in this blurry shot. The thing I don't like about it is that there's not a lot of uh, structure, cohesion. It's just a lot of randomness, which for me as the artist, I want to um, I want to have a little bit more structure so the viewer can actually understand what it is they're looking at. So here's another one. Oh, now I've got a lot more structure. I really like the trees and I love the tonality of the sky that's coming through in the background. But there's also a whole lot of dead space with this. So that one, you know, this is a maybe. This is maybe, maybe not a first pick, maybe a second round pick for me. Then let's move on to this. I've got a lot more structure. But let me show you the last one, the one that I think which one works. And I'll compare the two. This is the one I think works for me. I've got a lot of great structure. I've got a lot of great tonality from bright highlights to dark shadows. And the reason I pick this one over this one, it, it's these two diagonal lines here on the side that bother me. 
trees, we subconsciously know that trees are vertical. They go up and down, relatively straight. And to have these two angled lines for me does not feel as good as a shot like this where most of the tree trunks are going vertical. Hope that makes sense. So there you have it, which one works? Episode number 18. If you like this series, please feel free to click subscribe down below. Stay tuned for the next video and have a great day.